Hey everyone, thank you very much for showing up. I know we're we're the last session of today, so heart, uh, heart, well, uh, heartfelt thank you for for actually showing up this late. Yeah, everyone's stoked to learn about uh, cube control, huh? Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> so uh, I'm Eddie Zaneski. I'm joined by Maciej Schulich. Uh, we are the tech leads for SIG CLI. There's a few others of us on the Correct. SIG CLI leadership team. Um, and yeah. Yeah. SIG CLI is the special interest group for the CLI tooling of the Kubernetes project. Uh, Kubernetes is divided up into different special interest groups, and each one is responsible for a different part of the project. So we own the CLI tooling. Uh, we had a release 129 go out a, a few months ago. You may have seen it. A uh, couple things we shipped. We had sub plugins that landed in Cube Control uh, for create. So you can actually create sub commands that have your own create uh, specification. So you can do like Cube Control create my thingy and you can build a plugin for that. We also had some stuff that shipped with help and wait. Uh, 130 is, uh, we're currently in, I think, beta zero is what's cut. Yep, yep, yeah. yep. We are in the 130 close. release process right now, so you yeah. should see it in the next couple of weeks. Uh, we have some pretty cool features that are landing. In alpha, we have a uh, custom profiles for Cube Control Debug. These are, you can specify different uh, resource profiles and seccomp profiles that you want for your debug containers. It's a long ass feature, so get in there, play with it, give it a try when you, when you get 130 dropped. Uh, another big project that's been worked on is transitioning from Speedy to WebSockets. Uh, Speedy is the kind of what HTTP2 called before HTTP2 was a, a real thing. So it's super old, super deprecated. Uh, it's used everywhere for all of our streaming and long-lived connections inside of Kubernetes. Uh, there's a big effort that's been going on. Shout out to Sean Sullivan for cutting that over to use WebSockets for a modern approach. Uh, you will see that land in beta, which is awesome. Uh, and two big stable features that landed. Cube Control Delete now has interactive delete, which is super rad. I'll show you that in a second. Uh, and we finally moving uh, aggregated discovery to stable, which means that your discovery time should like go down. Yeah, like significantly down. Like, I'll, I'll talk about it in a minute when cool. we'll be going through major features that we went through. But awesome. Uh, Cube Control Delete dash I. Uh, Take a look at the slide. How many times has this happened to you where you accidentally deleted production, do not delete me and by auto-completing accidentally? Uh, as soon as 1.30 drops and right now behind an environment variable, you can toss a dash I on delete and it will prompt you before you actually delete anything. So you can stop yourself from shooting yourself in the foot. Uh, just get in the habit of tossing a delete dash I every time you do delete uh, and you will have a great time. Uh, we want to make this a default behavior at some point, so we're exploring ways to do that, but we can't do it by default because it'll break existing pipelines. Kind of a long thing, but yes, just get in the habit, tell all of your coworkers and friends to use dash I and you will be saved. Yeah, especially that we will be also saved by not having the issues and respond to, oh, by the way, I did kubectl delete all, all, and it literally broke uh, break my cluster, which is like kind of doing RMF uh, RM, uh, RF slash, so you, you remove everything. Yeah, get in the habit of doing it. Just tell yeah. everybody. Uh, you want to talk about customize? Go ahead. Customize shipped a bunch of awesome new stuff. We have a new sub pro uh, a lead for the uh, customized sub project. Shout out to Hugo uh, Cobalt on GitHub. Uh, they stepped up as the new lead for customize. Uh, some new maintainers and new sub project approvers. Shout out to Varsha, Marine, and Nick. Uh, there's big imp uh, performance increases that are coming to customize uh, for really large manifests. We're improving UX and documentation. Uh, there's planned Helm support, so they plan to ship full support for Helm, which is awesome. So any folks that depend on customize slash Helm, hopefully you can do a lot more fun stuff together. Uh, show up and join the customize uh, group uh, and show up on the, the bug, tr uh, bug scrub triage we'll talk about in a little bit later. Uh, and if you're not on the latest version of Customize, do upgrade to it. So look for that. Okay, so um, 10 years. So we wanna spend a little bit of time in focusing on what 10 years means for SIG CLI primarily. So a little bit of quick history around down. Back in 2014, when Cube was released, 0 0.2 around September was the first tagged version. At least that's the, the one that I found. For those that hasn't been around, at that, at that point in time, Cube had only one 
uh, API group, there was no apps, policy, I don't know what we have, RBAC, storage, and all those various groups that you're familiar with today, it only had one. It was V1 beta 1, and it only literally had what do we have? Six resources that you see on this on the slide. Uh, if you're not familiar with them, replication controller, it's like replica set. It was renamed with some slight changes. It still exists because it was GA back in 2015. So we will not remove it. But Minion was changed. But it it happened right before uh, 1.0. So does anyone know what Minion is called now? Yes, it's Note. Um, so there was a, a lot of changes, a lot of turmoil. PRs were flanked like crazy merges. Everything like you literally had to rebase your PRs every every 30 minutes uh, before 1.0. There were releases uh, 0. Point something, 0. Point something every single month, more or less. And that can also be seen from the user point of view because we quickly went through V1 beta 1 to V1 beta 2 through uh, all the way up to V1 beta 3, eventually um, settling on V1, uh, to, uh, which was released with the uh, first version of Cube. A lot of those changes also required us to write a lot of the code that is currently called API machinery. So all the conversions, all the uh, changes allowed us to modify uh, the API surface. Interesting changes, yes, Minion was renamed to Node. I think that was around 0 0.5, 0 0.6. Uh, the interesting one from our perspective, and I, I I'd be very happy to hear it does. Do we have anyone that tried Cube CFG before it, it, is, it was called Cube Cuddle? Okay, uh, surprisingly, if you do Google for Cube CFG, there is a thing that is called Cube CFG these days. That's not the thing that I'm talking about. There's like 1.0.5, so that's towards the end of 2014, early 20. Uh, end of 2014, early 2015, when we renamed the project and gave its current shape. Uh, out of interesting changes, basic authentication was introduced before 1.0, and so we hit the 1.0 around July 2015. Like I said, API, we reached V1. Uh, for backwards compatibility, we also shipped V1 beta 3, so people can rely on both. Additional changes that were somewhat notable were Already at that point in time, we had pluggable scheduler, uh, although it did require you to recompile the entire Kubernetes to include your plugins, and some basic admission uh, plugins that you might be familiar with today. Uh, post 1.0, we've seen a bunch of sh uh, changes. Some of these might be familiar. Maybe you worked with Kubernetes when these were introduced. Uh, Support for get extensions, plugin CLI runtime. Uh, that was a big change in uh, kubectl where we had a plugin support and CLI runtime is kind of like our abstraction on a, a runtime library for how we do CLI. Uh, we added customize to kubectl, uh, which we'll be talking about at some point in the future. Yeah, expect some announcements in the, <clears throat> sorry. Uh, in the upcoming months, there uh, there will be if you are using kubectl customized specifically, or generally customized embedded within kubectl. Please let me know. I'm 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 happy to hear from you. Uh, there will be some changes coming in the upcoming months and years. Yep. And then kube control the bug uh, dropped in. Oh, it was 118. It was 118. It's yeah. been quite some time. Uh, other big ones that landed, server-side apply, which we will talk about a little bit later. Um, you want to say anything? I, I mean, we're doubling about how to do kubectl apply that we currently have and how to make it work with the server-side apply. There are uh, issues with the client-side apply, primarily the fact that it has limitation with regards to the size which Eddie was asking me about it, and I'm like, yes, I'm fully aware that we have a uh, limit on the size of the annotation that currently the client side. So if you have issues that you run in with client side, please switch over to server side apply. I don't expect you run into the limitation. That's the first thing. Very likely it will be also uh, much more performant than client side apply. Uh, 
we're trying to figure out what would be the best way to transition people from using kubectl apply over to the server side apply the problem is people are um used to using apply and we were thinking about maybe switching apply from the client side to be the server by default there's still currently you have to use this dash dash server side uh, of flag and there are discussions whether we will introduce entire new command uh, and we cannot agree on the name because i support the idea i don't like the name if you're curious uh, we looked it up earlier today in august last year we discussed it it was proposed to be called actuate but i don't i i will be stronger i hate the name it does not mean what it's supposed to mean i'm a i'm not a native um, english speaker it doesn't mean anything for me apply is straightforward if you can come up with a better name that will be awesome as well we were going through synonyms with eddie earlier today uh, we had some interesting ideas smear cube control smear yeah there was one which one i like i can't remember there was yeah there was like delicate was one of them if i remember correctly yeah. uh, and similar so if you have some ideas demand. around cube control demand, demand. demand was one yeah. yeah i like that one but yeah if you're not familiar server side apply versus regular client side apply it stores the basically the whole entire specification your whole uh, yaml as a last annotate um a last applied annotation on your resource so it's actually doubling the storage size of the resource and it does this like three-way diff between what's in the annotation what's the current state and what is your desired state you're applying and yeah yeah and then if, and if people will start using uh client side apply with a i don't know create or debug or edit command roll out messes, undo scale yeah, that messes up the entire thing completely whereas the server side apply is a little bit better with regards to that because since all the operation with regards to the ser uh, to the apply are invoked on the server doesn't mean whether you invoke create edit or something the history is being preserved and there's even information about which manager as in which command or who uh, invoke a particular change out of the other notable changes that we also did over the past well that is roughly past year a year and a half <laughs> uh, open api v3 uh, which is primarily the server side changes you probably don't notice too much of a difference but basically it open api v3 allows us to have more descriptive information about the uh, resources that you are serving so the primary use case for that was for crds and for crd authors to better explain uh what the field requires and expressing that information then in for example kubectl explain where we are exposing that information aggregated discovery which is what eddie was also talking earlier today is a so normally when you um invoke any command uh, any kubectl command the first time what it does it will try to figure out what kind of api your cluster is using to do that it will try to iterate over all the apis available so it will ask first endpoint api and it will get information back and then it will start to traverse the tree of the api the other endpoint is api with an s at the end which has all those um, apps batch um, rbac and all those uh, additional groups and it will traverse that instead uh, so if you imagine uh, based on what i was saying it is a lot of traversing and it a lot of requests that it had to do initially uh, we noticed that this is very problematic both from a client side of things especially if you have too many crds but also from the uh from the server side because it has to respond to so many requests so we came up with an idea of having all those data combined and you do only a single request to the discovery endpoint and it presents you with the, the whole um, information about all the resources that the cluster provides which obviously speeds up uh, both the server side processing but also client because it's only a single request yes the data that it has to read is more or less of a similar size but the fact that it only does in a single request 
significantly uh, lowers the load on the cluster and on, on the server. And it handles each cache separately. So when it has to renew uh, a single resource or a single group, it doesn't have to fetch the entire surface of your API. So if you use a lot of CRDs with something like Crossplane, you should immediately see massive performance increases. These are the folks who like really needed that work done. So yeah, the other two we, we already covered, so we're not going to repeat ourselves. Uh, other notable changes that, that we want to highlight uh, around 111 was we did a major refactoring of the code. Uh, the initial version of Kubehattle, they worked nice, but each command, since it was written by a different author, it looked differently, it was tested differently. We had a nasty um, CLI factory, which at the time was a reasonable solution. Over time, it aged very well. We had to rewrite and, and, and scratch a lot of those bits. That was also the time when we introduced something that is called generic CLI options, which contains a lot of the similar tools that we're just using be, uh, between various commands. If you're a plugin author for kubectl, you probably are familiar. Uh, the generic CLI options is one of the packages of the CLI runtime library that Eddie was uh, mentioning. And one of the ideas, aside from uh, that was accompanying those refactoring, was to make the kubectl command. So the pattern that, I, that I've been talking about a couple of times, if you've seen kubectl walkthroughs or if you've ever looked under the hood in any of the kubectl commands, it has always the complete validate and run methods. That was one of the efforts that happened back then, uh, which, first of all, uh, it allows better compatibility of the commands. We can actually embed commands in other commands. For one such example is the wait command is embedded in, in other commands. Pro delete, delete is one of them. I can't remember if anyone else. Uh, but additionally, it allows and simplifies testing. The previous testing was, was a nightmare. The CLI factory, if you remember what I said a minute ago, yeah, so you had to instantiate this entire testing factory. It's a mess. There are still some old pieces that still use that. I would like to eventually get rid of them, um, but that requires a little bit more uh, investment. A uh, couple other sub-projects that we adopted post the 1.0, uh, Customize, which we mentioned, Crew and the Crew Index, people using Crew. I think the Crew Index, that's the plugin manager for uh, Cube Control. I think it's crossed, like, what, 200, almost 300 plugins? It's unbelievable how Crew Index uh, showed up when Ahmed initially wrote it. I remember talking with Ahmed, and we were both presenting the, the Cube Cutter plugins when we initially introduced the mechanism around 1.12, 1.13. And we had a joint presentation back in Seattle. And, and that was the time when Ackman started actually working on Crew and then Crew Index slowly. And over time, how we were seeing it just skyrocketed. So we're so thankful for all of you for submitting PRs and adding your, your plugins to the Crew and Crew Index. Yeah. Uh, Kui was another project we adopted as a sub-project. Uh, this was donated from the IBM folks. It's kind of like an approach to take Kube Control and turn it into a GUI. Uh, so you should check it out if you haven't seen it yet. It does some like parsing of the tables, makes things interactable. Uh, KRM functions and Kube Control validate. Uh, you want to say anything about those? Functions are kind of stalled. Kubectl Kube validate is like a newest addition. I, I will admit that I forgot about it its existence. I literally had to look it up. What, what have we done this past year? Um, KubeCutter Validate is actually, if you remember, the OpenAPI v3 that I was talking about a minute ago. OpenAPI v3, aside from having very detailed information about the resources, it also embeds information about the validation logic. Previously, a lot of the validation logic, if you remember, KubeCutter has a dash dash validate flag, which gives you some feedback about, oh, your resource is this and that. Uh, misformatted or something is wrong. Uh, the kubectl validate is actually reading that information from the open API v3, which is much, which allows much more thorough expressions with regards to what um, what the shape of the object should look like. This gives a lot more flexibility to the uh, CRD authors. And then by kubectl validate, which is a, another plugin for uh, for kubectl, you can actually consume those uh, those information and then have uh, for example, use it in your uh, CI/CD pipeline to validate the resources that you you are committing as one of like, for example, pre-submit step. 
Um, some things we had to deprecate, convert, we, we pulled that out into its own plugin. That's to convert between resource versions. It gets released separately right now. Uh, we got rid of the run generators. These were specifically like artisanal handcrafted uh, little commands to generate a specific who remembers kubectl run when, if you looked at its pay, uh, help page, it had two pages of man and all the flags that it actually had? Yeah, so there's a couple of folks. Um, I was behind the, I, so initially the story was like, we want to have something similar to Docker. So Docker had Docker run and whatever. So we figure out, oh, we'll do something similar in kubectl. So we started adding kubectl run. And then as people were adding deployment jobs, I added jobs and I also added the, the generator to, to kubectl, sorry. Uh, so eventually over time, it just grew to this monstrous command, which was a pain to work with and try to figure out, even at some point in time, there was, depending on the flag that you used, depending on the version of the cluster that you had, it was producing various resources. It was an art to figure out what you're gonna get. <laughs> so we were like, yeah, that's not gonna happen more anymore. And we started slowly deprecating all those stuff. I know that a lot of people complain because, and I'm, I, I apologize. Uh, a lot to to so many of you that had to struggle because I know a lot of people were actually building on top of kubectl run for their um, CKA exams and so forth. Uh, I, I apologize for that. But this way, we actually uh, succeeded in making the code much more simple and much more composable. And there are different, there are other commands which are much more better designed to provide those basic uh, creation command. So there's a, a whole set of uh, create subcommands. I don't even know what export did. Do you? Yeah, of course I know. <laughs> I, I ripped it out as well myself. Uh, so at, at some point in time, kubectl get has an op had an option dash dash export, which basically allowed you to export your resources. If you don't know what by export you meant, that basically mean we will give you the, the same resource kind of like dash o yum. Hmm. I think YAM or JSON was there by default, I can't remember exactly. But we would strip off some of the fields that were. The, the goal was to allow you for exporting that resources, I don't know, for reuse or something there. A lot of people started using this as either a backup tool, as a templating mechanism, and we started getting requests about, oh, but I want to remove the metadata fields. I want to remove status fields. And a different request was, I want to remove these other fields. I want to have yet another set of fields removed. And we were getting more and more requests, which one was completely different than the other. And at some point in time, we were like, we don't want to play in the game because each and every single person will have different use cases for that. And we would prefer you just do get YAML and then use an, an external process to cut whatever you don't care about. That will be the best approach for you and for us. So we started the deprecation process of, this, uh, of the flag. In parallel to that, because the export flag actually was invoking a separate endpoint in the API. So also in parallel to that, we had to remove the server side functionality of the exporting. So that was a relief to both the CLI maintainers and the API maintainers. Uh, this staging work, this was originally the Kubernetes was all just one big giant repo, one folder. Uh, we had to slowly start moving projects out to their own repositories. So if you ever come to make a, a contribution or a pull request to kube control, you'll notice that we don't actually take PRs to the Kubernetes slash kubectl repo. Uh, it's what we call a staging repo, and the code gets copied over and synced to that repo. But but open issues in the kubectl repo. So yes, or we'll move them. So <laughs> yeah, or we'll, or we'll remove them. But it'll be easier if you just open it up in the kubectl repo. Yeah. But that was a big effort. That took a lot of work from a lot of people to. And it was long time <laughs> and that long time was one of them was the fact that we had to deprecate the convert if you're curious why convert go ask questions after the talk I'll be happy to talk about the internals of convert uh, do you want to talk about any of these we got like I mean it's five, like six minutes. some some trivia stuff like when caps were introduced to so Kubernetes enhancements proposal out of the interesting stuff 
uh, if, if you're not familiar, why kubectl cop uh, copy is so limited in functionality these days, it was actually not like that. It was pretty powerful with regards to how much data you could copy with it, but it all ended up with a bunch of CVEs that we had to scramble. Uh, at some point in time, I, I found it out yesterday again, I had a proposal. I think we even merged it. I had a proposal to drop entirely kubectl copy from kubectl. Oh, I remember this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we were like, okay, we don't want to deal with additional more CVEs, so we'll just drop the entire command entirely and it will be simpler. Uh, we eventually figure out that the best option, and that's what we are currently working with, is we will allow very limited and you can only copy a single file. And we made all Tar take all the blame for anything that goes wrong. So love you, Tar. Yeah, because <laughs> uh, there is a problem that Eddie will be talking about in a minute. Yeah. Uh, so some future things that we're looking at and want to work on. Uh, we have a cap. We've talked about it for a while. It's getting some progress. This is to separate your cluster configuration from your client configs. So you should be able to set preferences for your, your cube control, your client locally, and then that is not tied to your, your cluster configuration. So like you're delete your interactive cluster. default. Yes. And so this will be used so you can default uh, cube control delete dash I to always be opting in. Uh, we're very sensitive to breaking things because there's so many pipelines that kind of auto update and grab the latest version of cube control that any breaking change we make would probably break everything. So that's where that's coming from. So look into that if you're interested. We also want to roll out support for multiple cube configs. I will make it easier for people with working with multiple clusters, with aliases to kind of adopt. If you have ideas, what if, so we want to do it, but we have no idea how to do it. I'll be honest. We're fully aware that this is a problem. If you have some thoughts and you have a little bit of spare time to figure out what we could do around this area, because I know that everyone was like, yeah, I want to do, I want to have like 10 cube, uh, cube configs. I'm like, do it for me. Yes, I. if I had a solution, we have a lot of thoughts about various things. I don't have idea how to do it yet. That would be smooth and, and, and use, usable. So if you have some thoughts, you know, uh, either let us know after the, this presentation. Come hang out with us, our meetings. Yeah, or Slack. exactly. I mean, yeah. there are multiple options, and yes, we want to hear from you what we can do to make it better. It doesn't mean that you have to. If you don't know how to write, that's totally fine. Even showing up and selling, like proposing what it could look like, is a valid approach. Uh, we mentioned earlier we want to figure out a new version of apply that's server side by default. So cube control demand, something like that. Definitely not uh, actuate or whatever it was. Uh, JSON path is super confusing for a lot of folks because we the JSON path that you probably know has a bunch of utilities and helper libraries built in that deviate from the actual RFC of JSON path. So things like length and all these other little functions you're used to aren't actually part of JSON path. Uh, so the JSON path that we have built into to kubectl is strictly RFC bound, so it's missing all this functionality. So we want to find ways to kind of give people the, the stuff they're looking at. Uh, we've explored the idea of adding cell support to uh, a cube control and other parts of the Kubernetes project, so give us your thoughts on that. Uh, we mentioned we want to do a new implementation of cube control copy. We actually want to move the, the copy API down into the container runtime, so it should be an API call to the kubelet to say, hey, give me this file out of this container or put this one into it. Uh, so we're hopefully going to get rid of all the other CVEs we have around copy by building that as a first-party API. Yeah, currently under the covers, we're basically doing a tar and then we're uh, piping the input and output on both ends. So your, uh, your shell with whatever the container has and we're just streaming the, the tar contents and we're extracting it back. So one of the requirements is that you have to have a tar working in the container to be able to use copy uh, or of, of some sort, because on the client, on the kubectl side, we have the tar embedded in the uh, in the binary, so that's not a problem over there. But yeah, it it is a hard requirement for the uh, for the container to work with kubectl copy. Yep. 
And last thing, we, we say no to a lot of things, but what we say most to is probably adding new flags. Uh, if you haven't done cube control, get help or apply help recently, you'll see lots and lots of help output. Uh, everything we add, it just adds so much burden to learn, document, keep track of, fix, patch. So we, we're really trying to not add as many flags as possible, especially short flags, like one letter character flags, we are definitely trying not to add at all, because. Yeah. yeah, if you remember what I said about uh, kubectl run before, those two pages of man, that is not acceptable and we don't want to repeat that mistake. And also adding a flag at this point in time, it's like, oh yeah, it's simple. The fact that it took me two years to get rid of all those flags from kubectl run and the amount of uh, different things that I've heard about that and seen about that is a separate topic. So be mindful that every time we have to add a single, oh, it's just, but this is just another flag. Yes, it is another flag, but it also means a increased burden on us, the maintainers of that particular command. Yeah, so we say no to that a lot, and that's why, so nothing personal. Uh, if any of this stuff interests you, you want to get involved, come hang out with us. We have meetings every Wednesday. Uh, it's 9 a.m. Pacific time, which is... It's 6 p.m. Central European. I okay. literally put it like the first thing just to make <laughs> sure that people from all around here yeah. can get it like and feel it for them. So every other week we have a SIG meeting where we talk through an agenda, talk through stuff, and then we alternate every of the off weeks for a cube control bug scrub or a customized bug scrub. So those are great for you to come in, kind of learn how we, we look at an issue, talk through the history, really triage it together. Uh, it's a great way to onboard into the project. So come join us for Ask questions that. if you have, or walk through your particular issue that you have. The meeting is a perfect place to talk about, for example, how we could approach the topic of multiple cube config files. Yeah. So also, if you could scan the QR code, re-rate the session, it helps us be able to do these still as maintainers. So thank you for doing that. And that's what we have. We got five minutes for questions, and we'll hang out afterwards. We're, so. we're last session. We can probably run a little bit longer than five <laughs> minutes, unless they kick us. No, oh, they're already saying they'll no. Tack us off kick, stage, they'll, yeah. they'll kick us out. All right, so who's got questions? We got a mic here. Hey, hello. Um, uh, first of all, about the kubectl convert, you mentioned that you can de describe the why, why this was deprecated. Okay, sure. Uh, so kubectl convert has uh, to be able to convert from uh, any particular API version. So it, let's imagine that I want to convert a particular resource from cube uh, batch v1 beta 1 to batch v1. What it requires is all the API machinery within uh, core cube has an internal version. Internal version has all the fields from both the batch v1 beta 1 and batch v1. It has to traverse through the internal uh, resource and then back to the version that resource. Uh, the way kubectl is currently written it is that it does not rely on those internal APIs because they are part of the, the core Kubernetes, so the main, none of the staging repositories. When we were moving to the staging, we needed to rely only on the cube provided libraries. So for example, API, client go, and all that. Those libraries strictly rely only on the official published API, not the internal ones. So convert still exists, but since it relies on the internal APIs, it exists in the core uh, in the core Kubernetes code, so that it has access to both the external APIs and the internals to be able to do the uh, the, the path. Okay, so it's deprecated, but still usable. It is a deprecated because we needed to. Uh, it was deprecated it. out of the client directly. It is so you don't have it by default as a kubectl sub command, but it is available as a separate plugin. Got it. So it's okay. only just the placement. It's not part of the kubectl main repository. It's part of the KK, uh, Kubernetes, Kubernetes main repository. Okay. That was the reason behind the deprecation. Thank you. There was a question over here. Hi, uh, you talked about the fact that in uh, kubectr you can run multiple commands from an over command. Um, but like one command can hide over once. Is there a chance, like, because it works with weight, that you can have something that 
stays over time running, that we could see at some point uh, kubectl customized be able to deploy, for example, a CRD and an object that depends on that CRD, even if it requires like an explicit dependency between two customization. I don't expect us in the law in the near future to do anything like that. I would be inclined to expand the weight functionality that we currently have. I know that there's uh, a lot of people asking for, I would like to be able to ask for this or that. I know there's a bug open. I think there's a bug open uh, where people complain that about the fact that if you don't have a resource defined yet, so you're cut, uh, you haven't submitted your CRD, kubectl weight will fail or when your pod is not created uh, and you invoke a weight on the creation, it will fail. That is definitely one of the things that I would like to see uh, being fixed and which should be uh, able to handle those situations. Although we probably want to balance the uh, balance between it's not created and, oh, you made a typo, uh, which happens from time to time. So that's one thing. Uh, but I don't expect to have like so sophisticated workflow like you just said. Separate commands, yes. Uh, we still want to maintain rather short-lived command, short-lived to some degree. Uh, and we're trying to follow the, the Unix principles, do one thing, but do it well. Okay, thank you. Cool. With that, we're out of time. Uh, we'll be happy to take any extra questions up here and hang out afterwards. So thank you all for coming.